So I finally, finally covered my old lady roots and I am ready to show you guys how I put in my tape in extensions at home all by myself. So I had been using a lot of clip in extensions for years. I actually have tons of bags of hair extensions from Bellamy was my absolute favorite. And I still would tell you, get the Jessica Bursiaga blends. They're awesome. And the Bugattis too, same, same. Uh, but I found myself in a situation a few years ago where I had hard catfished my husband from Match.com and we were dating, we were new to this whole thing. And I kept wondering once we got to that point, what I was gonna do to explain that I took my hair out at night before I went to bed. So I started looking into tape and extensions and I absolutely fell in love with both the brand that I use, cheap Amazon brand, and the method that I researched. So I watched a ton of videos just like this one and found one that I really felt was the easiest way for me to be able to get the same look that I could spend hundreds of dollars for installation at a salon at home. So stay tuned. I'm going to give you all my tips and tricks for getting that done, along with all the supplies you might need to be able to do this yourself at home. So outside of the hair extensions themselves, there's not a lot of things that you're going to need in order to do this. So the important things are just going to be your standard stuff, a brush. So I just use a wet, they're just called wet brushes. I love wet brushes, but I use a wet brush, a comb, just a junk comb that I stole from my son's drawer, some clips to hold hair back whenever you're not working with that particular section of hair, and then just regular old hair ties. So this is all you need to get started outside of the hair itself. Now the hair, it, the kind that I use comes from Amazon, and it's real human hair. You can style it, wash it, use heat tools, whatever you want to do, just like your regular hair. Um, and they come in a ton of different color combinations. What I use is the color that is marked, I think it is 424. So it's a blend of colors. It comes in a sleeve like this. And this is the 16 inch. So generally what I do is get three packs of 50 gram hair and I get one pack. <laughs> get one pack of hair that is a couple inches shorter than the rest just so that as I'm putting it in everything's not all one length and it helps to kind of graduate the the lengths with both the steps on my scalp and the length of the hair itself so this one is what I'm going to start with and it's about two inches shorter than the other two 50 gram sets so first what I did of course as I told you I covered my grays but washed my hair, but I did not use conditioner. It's super important not to add conditioner to your hair, especially at the roots before you put in your fresh extensions. So I washed and dried my hair with absolutely no product in it whatsoever. That's also very important. So not just the conditioner in the shower, but you don't want to put product in your hair before you apply your extensions. So fresh, clean hair, washed, dried, and then brush it out to make sure that all of the knots are out. And then the next thing we're gonna do is actually section off the top part of our hair that has going to have no extensions in it whatsoever. But the important part about this section is to make sure that we keep enough hair above where we're gonna start our extensions so that when we let our hair back down over top of where we apply those extensions, we're not going to see where the tapes are on your scalp. So I generally start right here above my temple and I just run my fingers straight back, making sure that I'm staying straight back in the back here too. So you can see straight across my temple, past the back of my head. I'm going to try to create as good of a part as I can and then just pull that hair straight up. So this is a part that is not necessarily the easiest part when you're doing it by yourself because of course you can't easily see the back of your head. Um, but I'll show you. I make this nice and tight and I kind of do a, 
a little genie bun on the top to keep everything out of the way while I'm while I'm working. And then I'll take my clip and clip it on the top of my head. So this is where I start. Now it is important that you check and make sure that you have a fairly straight part in the back. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see I have this little little lip there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be as close to straight as you can make it because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our extension tapes that are about an inch and a half wide and we're going to lay them on that line. So like I said, they come in these sleeves and all you have to do, there's literally no prep to the extension themselves when they're brand new, but you open up the package and they are attached just with a twist tie. So I'm gonna pull those off of there and snip the little things that are binding it together. Okay, now let's talk about each one of these little wefts. So each one is multicolored. My hair is not all one color. So in order for it to blend well, it doesn't have to be a perfect match, but you don't want one solid color that you're trying to fit into your hair. So that's why I like these particular extensions because they're actually super natural when it comes to even how my roots are dark and then it fades into other colors. So on the back of these is a little sticker top. So underneath this sticker is adhesive. This is super sticky and you don't wanna to touch it with your fingers as much as you can. You're not gonna be able to avoid 100% touching with your fingers, but you wanna try not to touch with your fingers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to start the placement of this first weft. So I took the tape off of the back. I'm going to use this part as my guide for this first row. If you watch other videos with other people putting them onto other people, this is a completely different method than that. This is a lot easier and um, it's one that I have probably perfected a little bit in the last couple years. So it's not super easy the first time but it gets easier and easier each time you do it. So I like to wear my hair in a ponytail a lot or a messy bun a lot. So I try to put my extensions in a way that I am not going to be able to see them when I pull my hair up. So I'm careful to leave at least a couple inches in front of my ears to where extensions aren't gonna be. So I generally will take that section and then start this tape right above it, not all the way at the part but as close to the part as I can so I literally just laid that tape in ex extension with the adhesive right there so that's half of each one weft being put in so I'm gonna grab my next piece and take the tape off again so essentially what we're doing with these types of extensions is you're sandwiching a fine layer of your hair between these two tapes so here's the, tr the trick to doing it yourself. So we're gonna take this tape that I just laid onto that hair and lightly lift it up. When I lift it up, it's taking that fine layer of hair that it attached itself to and it's lifting it up with it. So I am then going to take this with the adhesive face up, lay it directly under that tape and then just flip this one back down on top, making sure that the two ends meet, press them together lightly with my fingers, and that is my first weft placed. So another thing that I do, and this is up to you whether or not, it does definitely help them to stay in a little bit longer. I take an old, and I say old because sometimes you will get adhesive on it. I take an old junk straight straightening iron, and I just really quickly touch it, clasp it between the straightening iron to kind of warm up that adhesive and it helps it to really set in there. So it is literally that easy. I'm gonna place a couple. I'm 
gonna place a few more in so that you can see, and then we'll talk a little bit about the pattern and stuff, but I'm gonna fast forward through some of this so that it's not, you don't have to watch the entire hour it takes for me to put these in. So here we go. Again, it's tape off, face up, flip up, place it underneath, make sure your sides are matched up, press them together with your fingers, hit it quickly with your hot iron or your flattening iron, good to go. So you can see that this doesn't give me a ton of extra length, but it is definitely the first layer to adding some more volume. So it does get a little trickier when you get towards the back and you can't easily see the side. So hand mirror will become your best friend for this. So essentially I just place the next one, not right on that first one. There's a little bit of space here, about a finger worth of space. And I place that again at the part. And then believe it or not, when you put your second piece on in the back, it's not hard at all to not be able to see. Tape up, flip up, place underneath, sail it up. So the other thing you want to do periodically, and I do it at least every level that I put in, is to brush through and make sure that you're brushing through all the way up to those tapes. The reason is if you create any loops of hair that get stuck up in that tape that are either yours or the extension and they get adhesed into a next set of tapes, you are going to hate yourself for about six weeks because every time you go to brush, you're going to catch up in those loops. So you can see the first layer is all in. Now I'm going to literally just go underneath with my thumb, pick up that entire layer, and I twist it up and around, and that makes my next part, and I'm ready to go on my next layer. I generally just open up that clamp a little bit to put it back in, and then we are on to the next. So I try not to put my next level directly below each of the other ones. I try to kind of stair step it or kind of like you would bricks. So you're not gonna put them like this, you're gonna put them more like this. Also, you wanna make sure that when you put them in their rows that they don't overlap at all. <clears throat> Lastly, it's hugely important that when you put have your hair in it, that there's hair all the way across that sticky band. It's pretty easy if you're just pressing it down, when you lift it up, it's gonna pick it up all the way across. But if you only have hair sandwiched into one side or the other, you're gonna end up with a lot of pressure and you could end up damaging your hair that way. <clears throat> Speaking of damaging hair, you're gonna find very few beauticians that are gonna tell you, yes, go ahead and put your own tape and extensions in. That's just the reality. So do it at your own risk. What I can tell you is that I had very fine, brittle hair that was not growing at all for several years, mostly because of my diet soda addiction. And so using tapins for me actually helped my hair to get a lot healthier. Why? Because I'm washing it a lot less. I'm using a lot less heat styling. A lot of times when you get your hair done, curled, good to go, that's going to last for days with these extensions. This extension hair holds curl a lot better for whatever reason than my natural hair does. So once I do my hair, curl it, everything is good. I have days with, with, out having to rewash or restyle my hair. So it might be a couple days down, a couple days in a ponytail, a day or so in a messy bun, but I'm not doing as much heat styling and that type of thing to my hair on a regular basis. So I'm gonna finish putting in the next row or start putting in the next row. And I'm not gonna start again right where I started this one. I'm going to go a little bit behind it 
and make sure that I am at close to the root on the section that I'm putting it in. You don't want to place these far down from your root. So you have to be careful about little sections like this. See how this little baby set of hair was still down? You don't want to catch that in your glue. So just make sure this is all a clean part there that you're placing that extension on. Don't forget, tape upside down. So second row is done, same thing this time. I'm just gonna grab each one of those by going underneath with my thumb. Wrap it around the top, move that clip over. However, what I am gonna do this time for the next row is to switch to my longer set now. So I used all but two pieces, one weft of that 16 inch set. Now I'm switching over to the 18 inch set so that the length blends in well and everything is not all one uniform length. So same process all the way through. Now you can see I'm starting to get more of the length going. So same thing again, pick it up. Clip it down. Now is when you want to start to be careful though because the further you go down onto the back of your head, the more trouble you're gonna have if you're someone that does like to wear their hair up a lot. So I do, for work I wear my hair up almost every single day. So I make sure that I leave a section about this big from the nape of my neck up, that when I pull my hair up, that hair is gonna cover that lowest set of extension tapes. So you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So I have about, let's see, Still have a fair amount left here. So I'm gonna go ahead in with the next row. And again, I'm doing the longer ones still. And I'm still only in the second pack of 50 grams of hair. This one I'm actually gonna start in the middle just because some of them are um, didn't make it all the way to the middle. So I wanna make sure that it's evenly dispersed throughout my head and I don't have second sections there that it's not as thick as the rest. So if I keep starting in the same spot, outside to inside, outside to inside, eventually that is a smaller line that I'm working with. So I'm not going to make it all the way across. So towards the bottom here, I do start at the middle a couple times to keep it even. So these last couple, as I put them in at the nape, I'm gonna try to turn them a little bit on the diagonal. Instead of putting them straight this way, I'm gonna put them this way. So when I pull my hair up into a ponytail, they're kind of flipping in the correct direction. So instead of straight, I'm gonna give them a little bit of that angle there. So when I flip it for ponytail, it's going in the correct direction. I'm not gonna see it flip out odd. So 
So this is where I'm going to stop putting them in. You can see that you can't see the tapes anywhere. I'll stand up a little bit. So, but what I do need to do, my, my hair on top of it was not completely straight. Everything below was. So I need to go through and either curl it all or straighten it all. So I'm going to go and finish curling my hair to show you what it looks like when it's all done. And then I will come back and update you. All right. So this is the final product. So it took me right around an hour to get all of these in. And if I turn around, you can see it is very difficult to make out what is my real hair, what is not. I would easily be able to do a ponytail or a messy bun or anything like that. And I think this length is probably a little bit long for me, but it's easy to cut. Again, the things you cannot do while you have these in, you don't wanna color the hair while it's on your head, but you absolutely can color these extensions. I would recommend having your beautician do it to match your hair color. You also wanna be careful with, you never, ever, ever wanna use any shampoos that have sulfates or alcohol in them because that will deteriorate, deteriorate that glue and it's gonna loosen and they're gonna slip quicker. So another thing too, you wanna to wash as little as you can. This is where my love affair with dry shampoo came in. So dry shampoo will be your best friend. You just wanna go in and lift up kind of in between your rows of extensions and just like you would if you use dry shampoo without ex extensions, kind of rub that powder into your scalp a little bit so that it absorbs the oils. Um, as far as nighttime, low ponytail or a loose braid, you want to do as much as you can to eliminate a lot of that tangling. So I definitely can go through and brush my hair like I normally would. I wash my hair like I normally would. I don't want to condition above mid shaft of my hair. So I don't ever want conditioner or oil type thing to get into where these tapes are. But you can use oils, hair oils, hot oils, anything like that on the ends of this hair to keep it healthy. And certainly condition the ends just like you would your regular hair. Um, for reusing these extensions, if there was anything that I do not like about the extensions, it's just that they're kind of a pain when you want to, when you want to reuse them. It's wonderful as far as the cost. I think what I have on my head is probably around $120 worth of hair, um, but I can reuse these over and over every six weeks until usually about six months of use. And then I start to notice that they get ratty, um, but you can trim them just like you would if your own hair got, got split ends. So these will get split ends just like yours. You can curl them, you can do whatever you want just like yours but you have to remember that they're gonna react just like yours. So if it's dry, it gets brittle. If you do too much heat without heat protectants, you're gonna get split ends. Um, and then definitely, like I said at night, you don't want to be sleeping and just let it get tangled and gross and rough. Um, as far as when you do go to reuse them, all you have to purchase is the replacement tapes. So these ones I get from Amazon and I'll link them below too. But when you take your extensions out, I actually just kind of wipe that adhesive off on foil. And maybe I'll do another video to show you the process of preparing your hair to be used again. And then just place on the new tape and you're good to go back through the same process. So this is it. This is how I do my hair extensions. I generally don't do them too much over the summer just because like I said, we, we do boat a lot and that kind of thing. So if you're gonna be in chlorine water and that type of thing regularly, I would say that tapins are not your best bet. For this time of year though, and for somebody who isn't regularly in and out of water, doing water sport, that kind of thing, um, I think they're wonderful. I've had the best luck with them. I've had so many compliments. I'm the first person everywhere I go when somebody says, oh my gosh, I love your hair, to say, ah, oh, look, they're taped in. Um, so let me know if you try it, if you love them, if you hate them, if you've had a great experience or you have not. And please, while you're here, subscribe below. If you found something in this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time.